Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Ethereum, and we're gonna be looking at its logarithmic regression bands. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. Let's go ahead and jump in. So we, we did provide an update to Ethereum not too long ago, but in that video, we mostly spoke about the Ethereum Bitcoin valuation, which to me is is a much more important metric to look at, right? And we talked, we, we, it was like a 30 minute video. We talked about how likely that this was just a fake out and nothing more than a lower high and how that is the more relevant metric to look at. And I will stand by looking at, at valuations of these cryptocurrencies against Bitcoin is the best way to do so, is the best way to, to go about uh, the cryptoverse, okay? My mind cannot be compelled to change on that because it's all about opportunity cost. With that said, um, I you know I, I can understand why some people would prefer to talk about their USD valuations, and it 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 can be useful to better understand uh, likely outcomes as as the market cycle progresses. So I do want to spend this video mostly talking about the USD valuation of Ethereum over the Bitcoin valuation of Ethereum that we spoke about just a few, you know, just a few days ago. So there is this idea that we've had for a long time, and that's, you know, that we can fit a logarithmic regression band to Ethereum's price data, but to choose that data based on what we think is considered to be quote unquote non-bubble data. So it is somewhat discretionary as to what someone might deem to be, in fact, non-bubble data. For instance, there will be a lot of people, and I'm not saying they're wrong, right? There will be a lot of people that would argue that this here should be included in this logarithmic regression trend line fit. And if you did that, of course, it would shift this just subtly upwards. I think the issue that I have with that is that normally when you go from one cycle to another, you have to adjust the regression band not not you know, to the upside, but to the downside, normally. To give you an example of what I'm talking about, if we were to pull up Bitcoin, so if we were to pull up Bitcoin's logarithmic regression trend line, and uh, let me just go ahead and do that really quick, you will see that we actually dropped below it this cycle. Now, you might think that, oh, well, does that mean that Ethereum has outperformed Bitcoin, uh, you know, since late 2021? And actually, that's not true. Um, Bitcoin has has actually held its value better than Ethereum uh, from from the high to the low. Okay, so Ethereum went down about eighty-two uh, percent. Bitcoin went down about seventy-seven percent. Okay, so from that perspective, even though Bitcoin went below its regression band, Ethereum actually dropped more. And so at this point, and note that I, I, I probably should update this regression band relatively soon, basically because there was this deviation outside of it. Of course, we have had deviations outside of it before, and, and I, haven't, I haven't updated it yet. But normally, I, I wouldn't expect to update a regression band because it outperformed. It, it's more so because it would, it would underperform, okay? Now, I know some people just think that I'm being too stingy with my view on Ethereum, that I should just get with the times. And look, they might, they might have a point. But at this point, I cannot yet be compelled to change my view. The Ethereum Bitcoin valuation has continued to play out how we thought that it would. And given that we know that the pre-having years wreck both the bulls and the bears, right? We wreck both sides in the pre-having years. We just spent January, February, March, and April wrecking the bears. May, we wrecked the bulls. June, it remains to be seen, but I would still argue there's uh, you know plenty of months throughout the, the rest of this year where we can uh, wreck the bulls, probably a couple where we wreck the bears as well, just to get it in line about six and six or so. But at this point, I still think that because Bitcoin has to wreck both sides before the year is out, and because the Ethereum Bitcoin valuation is what, and, and what I would consider to be a downtrend, right, just putting in lower highs uh, for a long time, that there is still a, a very high risk here of us going back to the fair value logarithmic regression trend line. Now, an interesting development is that the fair value, according to this fit to non-bubble data of Ethereum is at 875, but the prior low was actually at 880. So they're essentially the same. 
if 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 ethereum went back down to its prior low that would get it back home and we talked about this a year ago right i said look guys what i think is going to happen is we either go down to the regression band or we go sideways until it catches up now if we were to dump now it would actually be if we were to dump to the what i've called home before right it would actually correspond to the prior low. That doesn't mean that you can't go below that level. As you can see, we did go in entirely below the entire regression band back in March of 2020. And in fact, it went about 34% below the regression band during that drop. If we were to have another drop similar to that, like 34% below this level, that would correspond down to about a $400 Ethereum, which is why I've thrown that number out there in the past as a, a potential outcome in sort of like a, a a worst case scenario environment or something or like around that level plus or minus a hundred dollars right it could be could be a little bit higher uh, could be lower right but that would be sort of a a, a worst case um outcome that i i would i would consider so at this point the band ranges from 604 at the low end to 1266 at the high end right now ethereum is coming in right around seventeen hundred dollars so we are still quite a bit a ways away from entering into the regression band, right? The Ethereum valuation would need to drop about 24% or so for us to just get back down to the fair value logarithmic regression trend line. I, I would also say too, that when you look at, at Ethereum and you, you take a look at you know, how it tends to perform in say the, the pre-halving year, uh, looking at, say, year-to-date ROI could be one way um, to go about trying to figure out, you know, how would likely, how would Ethereum likely perform during the, you know, during the second half of a, of a pre-having year. It's not loading at the moment, but maybe if I reload it, it'll load. Um, I'll, I'll leave that for a minute and I'll come back to it. But normally what you would expect, normally, right, we, we don't really have a ton of data points, but um, we saw this in 2019 where it rallied for half the year and then it sort of faded, uh, you know, after that. And and if we were to look at, at at it for Bitcoin, you'll remember that in 2019, Bitcoin had a positive year, whereas Ethereum did not. And Ethereum actually closed the year below its yearly open. Now, this is what it looks like for 2023 so far. The yearly open for Ethereum, if you're curious, if we were to go figure out what exactly the yearly open was, um, it was 11.95. So if it wants to follow the ghost of 2019, then that means that Ethereum could in fact close the year below 11.95, which, I mean, I know that sounds um, like a big drop, but it's actually not that large of a drop from the current valuations. I mean, you know, I mean, we're currently already at, at around 1700. And, and so, you know, to get back to that level, you're talking about, you know, a 30% drop. I mean, it can happen, right? I mean, it certainly can happen. Um, so I do think there is a case to be made that Ethereum would in fact revisit its lower logarithmic regression trend line. Okay. Now there's another logarithmic regression chart that we can look at, and that's sort of this logarithmic regression rainbow. And we've had this one for a long time too. You can actually see that in 2019, uh, we came up to the top of this gray band, which is kind of the same spot we just went to, uh, during this, during this pre-having year as well for Bitcoin. Um, do note though that after it tagged that in 2019 in July, uh, June, July, we then faded it uh, basically until early the next year. So I would still say, yeah, there is certainly a chance here that it just kind of fades back down into the fair value logarithmic regression trend line. The other way to view this is to not look at the year to date ROI, but to actually look at the ROI after after the peak because that can tell you some interesting stuff as well and if you look at it for ethereum and draw it out to the next peak but just sort of look at what happened in 2019 you can see that it, it came down or sorry 2018 it came down uh, and then it rallied and then it sort of faded again in the second half of the year i think we're probably in this fade period where it doesn't mean that you're not going to have some rallies back up right in fact we probably will right and there's no there, there's no reason that you can't see bitcoin and Ethereum rally five to 10% occasionally, right? That would actually be fairly normal and expected, but arguably we have just been putting in lower highs, um, you know, since, since about mid April. Okay. And one of the things I've said before as well, with regards to, you know, to, to Bitcoin 
is that we need to see the dominance get back to around that 60% level. One way for it to do that is for in a downtrend, which at least it is in right now. I mean, market conditions can change, but it's been in a downtrend since mid-April. Um, these rallies have a way of shaking off the altcoin market on their Bitcoin pairs and also Ethereum. And you can see that's playing out right now, you know, again, right? I mean, like Ethereum's Bitcoin valuation is, is down below 0.065, even though Bitcoin is up. So let's just let's just remember that Ethereum does tend to fade when Bitcoin is below its 20 week SMA. And again, right now, Bitcoin is only just below it. Maybe we'll get a weekly close back above it. Uh, we're, we're still above the 21 week EMA, but we are, in fact, below still the 20 week SMA. We need to get back above. I mean, we're almost there, right? We, we need to get back above around 26,329. Um, for us to be back above the 20-week SMA, but you would also need to see yearly closes uh, back above that level as well, or not yearly closes, weekly closes about back above that level as well for it to be um, um, important, okay? So my view on Ethereum um, is that it, it likely fades going into the back half of the year. We've talked about this many, many times, okay? This should not be news to anyone. Um, and that ideally, ideally, it would eventually return home before we, we actually gear up for a, a real bull market to, to potentially take us to new highs. Um, I only say that because this is what we've seen in the past. Doesn't mean that it has to happen. But, you know, back in 2019, when we were up here, I didn't think we were going to go all the way back down here. And we did. And it was, in fact, a 75% correction. Now, a 75% correction from this level for Ethereum would actually get it down to around $500. It doesn't have to be that. I mean, again, if you if you look at this initial drop, it was 95, so it was 95 and then 75. This one was about, you know, 80, 82. So perhaps if it does fade in the second half of the year and our thesis is correct, maybe it only fades 60% and gets you down to 840. Or maybe it's like 65% and gets you down to 739. Or maybe it's 70% and gets you down to 622. All right? There's obviously a lot of different things we could consider, but these are these are the things that I'm currently looking at. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and again, check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at IntoTheCryptoverse.com. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.